Hey everyone, it's William. Today we'll be reading some victim stories. We've had three ladies come to our inbox on Facebook, Scamming Scammers Action, and tell their story. If you would like your story told and made into a video, please contact us on Facebook under Scamming Scammers Action. Come to our inbox. We'll be happy to add your story to our reading list. You could remain anonymous, and your story may help another victim. So keep that in mind if you'd like to share. Our first story comes from a lady from Brazil. I'm a 48-year-old Brazilian female physician that got divorced after being married for 14 years in November of 2017. After some time recovering, I decided it was time to try and find a new love. But how would I do that? How would I get to know new people? The answer seemed clear, dating sites. And I started using Tinder in March of 2018. Some matches happened, but only very few led to some more conversations or even a face-to-face -face meeting. On May 10th, I was surprised when a handsome guy started talking to me. After the match, of course, every woman feels happy to have a match with a handsome man on Tinder. When he said that he had never been to Brazil and that he could match because he had a paid Tinder account that allowed that, I thought, okay. This won't be a new lover, but it's good to learn new things, and at least I could improve my English. I never expected that we would keep on talking for days. Besides being handsome, the guy was also polite and romantic. I can say that he knew exactly which buttons to push. Day after day, I got more attracted to him. I remember how my heart started to beat faster, and my hands would shake when he would say he wanted to come to Brazil to meet me. Even though I am a clever woman, his words made my heart fall for him, and I couldn't see a reason for him to be lying to me. This fairy tale lasted for 40 days, and then the nightmares started. He was working in another country. He had been robbed and asked for money. Before this, I had never heard anything about scammers. I knew nothing about their behavior. All I had was my mind telling me that something was wrong. I denied the money, but couldn't stop talking to him, and he just kept his sweet and loving words. It took me more than 20 days, a lot of research to be sure about what was happening, and many, many sleepless nights to give me the courage to finally block him, and many tears. I've tried all I could, reporting him in many social networks, digging after the real man, more reading, more videos. The only thing I couldn't and still can't do is talking about him to anyone. Even though I have lost no money, I know I have lost something more important, my self-confidence. I feel ashamed for having been fooled. He had all the red flags, and now I know it. How could I have fell for him? How can I tell this to anyone without feeling stupid? So I suffer in silence, except for these words. I wonder what has turned me, as many others, into easy prey. Is it loneliness? Is it lack of information? I don't know the answers, but surely the scammers know. I'm writing this for you, who have also been the victim, not to feel so lonely and ashamed. The words here to show you how much a victim feels and the courage others to tell their stories. Don't blame and punish yourself. There's nothing wrong about having a kind heart. There's nothing wrong with being able to love. We must stay together and fight our pain. You are not alone. And thank you very much for this wonderful story. Uh, she also added that for those who laugh at victims, I would like to say it could have been you. You're lucky to get to know about scammers before they get to you. Please be nice. Victims have already suffered enough. And this is a wonderful story uh, shared by this uh, very intelligent, well-spoken lady, and we thank her for that story. Our next story comes from a lady from Thailand. I am from Thailand, so forgive me if my English is not the best. I was scammed two months ago by a man who went by the name James Peters. I am a divorced mother of two who up until recently never imagined myself going online to look for romance and love. James came to my messenger in Facebook saying he was looking for a friend and my profile picture was very pretty and stunning. I laugh 
at first about this. I'm 46 years old, and I'm not pretty. I'm an average Thai woman, nothing special, but his kindness intrigued me. He said he was in the army and stationed in Afghanistan for four more months, then he would retire. He sent me many photos of himself in uniform and while in Afghanistan. I had never met an American soldier before, and I found him quite handsome. I have never dated an American man. I am a simple woman. I work in a hotel as a cleaner. I'm not rich, and I have very little in life, but I'm thankful for my amazing kids. This is why I felt a connection with him. He said he was a single father, a widow. His wife died of cancer a few years prior, and his daughter stayed with a nanny in a UK school while he was deployed. I knew nothing about the military, especially American military. We talked daily. Every single day he would send me poems, songs, kind gestures. We grew closer. And as we grew closer, he asked me for a few little things. He said he needed an iTunes card so that he could communicate with me further, as the military didn't pay for them to communicate with civilians. I found it strange, but I thought it was okay. So I bought him two $100 iTunes cards, which was a lot of money for me. He knew I was poor, and he said he would pay me back. He would take care of me. Shortly after, he asked me for my banking information so he could send me money to help with my kids. He said he would love to be their father. My kids' real father had left us many years ago, abandoned us and the children. My kids never had a father in their life. So the thought that my two sons would have a father figure and have him being a strong American soldier would be a wonderful way to teach my kids discipline and to strive for excellence. He said his agent would be sending me money after me giving him my banking information. About a week later, a deposit was made online in my account for 25,000 baht, or around 780 US dollars. He said for me to keep half of that and send the rest to a military processing agent in Nigeria. He said the money was for him to take early retirement so he could visit me and my kids. I was to transfer that portion of the money with a Western Union. I kept the remainder and used it to pay for school and some goods for my children, food, and some clothes that we needed. A month later, my bank contacts me because a lady in Canada has filed for a fraud scam alert on her account. The money was transferred from her account to mine, and she did not authorize this money to be sent. To make this more complicated of a story, I am now having to pay back the bank for the funds, and my American soldier has deleted his profile and will not answer my calls or texts on WhatsApp. This has brought total ruin to myself and my children, as I cannot work enough hours to pay back the money that is owed, plus all the fees and interest. This has torn my family into pieces. Since James has left, I get 50 or more friend requests a day from soldiers. I know they are all fakes and scams. Thank you for letting me tell my story. To other ladies in Thailand and around the world, don't fall for a handsome soldier. In social media, it is probably a scammer. And we'd like to thank you for telling your story. We have one more, and this comes from a lady from Poland. I am from Poland, so English is not my first language, but I will try hard to write, as this story is like so many others. I met one man online through the site Tag. He said he was an oil worker who lives in Texas. I had never dated one American man before, but I think to try. I was going through a divorce with my abusive husband, and the divorce would be signed off in one month's time, after us being separated for two years. It is a long process to divorce. But the love had been gone for many years, and my now soon-to-be ex-husband had moved on over a year ago with a new woman. I started talking to a man I came to know as Michael Jones in December of 2017. I was pretty much alone for Christmas, except for my parents, who stopped by to visit, and my sisters. I have no children, and I am 40 years old. To be alone and feel lonely for so long with a husband, and now to be nearly divorced and alone, I thought to trying to meet online friends through social sites, so I tried tagged. 
I am also on Facebook and other socializing sites, but Tag, my one friend told me, is a great site to just chat. I'm not into apps, computers so much, so it made sense to me to use an app that was very simple. I could chat back and forth. Michael said he worked for Chevron Oils. He was out at sea most of the time, working, but was able to message me on the site and ask me to download a Hangouts because he said it was easier for him to use while away. I did so after he walked me through how. We chatted well into the night about life, family, religion. He said he was Catholic like myself. And about love, a future family if possible. It was so exciting. My soon-to-be ex-husband never wanted children, although I always did. He sent me songs and messages, and I found myself staying up all night chatting to this one man and being very tired for work in the morning. I work for a real estate and sales company. I deal mostly in finance. It has been my job for 10 years. He knew I was gainfully employed, full-time. Michael and I started to fall in love. He promised to come to Poland to meet me in the summer. When June came, we planned to meet in Poland and then we would fly together to Paris for a romantic week. He promised me romance, and it has been my dream to visit Paris for many years. My ex-husband never wanted to go. The day before he was to visit, he said that he was stopped by the UK immigration. He was supposed to fly from Texas, Houston, to London, and then to Krakow, Poland, where I would drive to meet him at the airport. I got a call from the immigration department claiming to be in the UK. And the man tells me that Michael was arrested because they found illegal items in his luggage. The customs would not say what it was. They said I was only his only contact and I needed to pay 3,000 euro to the immigration holding fee for his legal and illegal undeclared items or he would face jail. I was in a panic. This man I love, and I was only allowed one time to speak with him, and he was crying, saying they beat him, and they are demanding payment. He begged me. He cried to me. He tells me how much he loved me. So I took money from my savings and sent the money to a payment agent in the UK, one woman whose name I've never heard of. The immigration department said she was the agent to handle his release. I sent the money via Western Union two times. After I got a notice that the money was picked up twice, I never heard from him again or immigration. I tried to call, email the office whom sent me the, the email and calls, but both refused to answer. I finally checked the number and emailed to the real UK immigration office, and they told me that I had been scammed, that they do not operate in such ways. They do not have a man being held by that name. I tried to find him on Hangouts but he had either blocked me or vanished as I could no longer see his username. I sent email after email, but no reply. My love had vanished with my money. Now it will take me a long time to get back what I lost. But what is worse is I lost the trust in mankind. Thank you for letting me tell my story. And we'd like to thank everybody who told their story. Uh, this just gives a perspective that scammers target people from all over the world. They're not just um, targeting, you know, Australians or UK or American men and women. They're targeting uh, people all over the, the world. And so if you have a story you'd like to tell, uh, again, you can find us on Facebook, Scamming Scammers Action. Come to our inbox, uh, tell your story, and I'll read it for you. You can remain anonymous. And again, don't be ashamed. And also... If English is not your first language, uh, you know, try your best to use a translator, and we're more than willing to help you in telling your story. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for more stories, more videos, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And again, if you need help, we are on Facebook, Scamming Scammers Action. Thank you. Bye.